hello guys welcome back to the channel today i'll be showing you how to create uh, this website okay it's a, an article summary website and i named it brief ai okay so it is it was in, this website was inspired by js mastery okay he initially created this website so but created it using react and vit or is it react or vit something like that but this one will be creating will be updating the website we'll be creating it using next.js next 13 and we'll be using typescript okay also we'll be using table css for the style and we'll be adding some extra functionalities okay like light mode all right dark mode okay dark mode then the system mode i'll be storing them in our local storage okay and we'll be adding a typewriting effect okay to our web to our website and a copy to our summary article summary all right you may be asking what, what are the prerequisites to start this course okay just no basic react even though you don't know next yes you can take this course i will explain as we're going and if you don't know tailwind css Though I explain a little bit of Tailwind CSS, but I didn't go in depth, right? I'll be creating a full crash course on Tailwind CSS soon. But I explain, and and I believe you are good to do. All right, guys. So the first thing you need to do is to create a folder on your desktop or right, your, your laptop. Right? You can name it Brief AI. Make sure the folder is in small letters. Okay. Let's open the terminal in our VS Code. Right. I'm inside the folder directory. Make sure you are inside the folder directory. Then we'll create our next app. Okay. npx create dash next dash app. Okay. At latest. Then dot slash. Okay. So the next app will be created inside of the brief AI directory. Okay. Then we'll click enter. It takes some seconds. Okay, guys. So it will ask you do we want to use TypeScript? Click yes. Okay. Do you like to use ES Lint in this project? Let's say no. And by the way, if you want to select, you can use your arrow key to select yes or no. All right. Your arrow key to your keyboard. Okay. So would you like to use Tailwind CSS? Let's say yes. Would you like to add the source directory? No. Okay. Use the app router. Okay. Yes. And would you like to use the default? import alias just say no okay all right so our tailwind app will be our next year's app will be installed okay so it will take some minutes and i'll be right back okay. you can see it shows success all right so let me, let's click the terminal okay so as you can see we have the tailwind.config file that means the tailwind is applied to our app all right so the first thing we need to do is to create some screen sizes in the tailwind so first of all we can remove everything here okay so let me just let's just remove this just leave the extend and team all right so guys so i believe you are familiar with tailwind all right so though if you are not familiar you can still continue with this project i'll make sure i explain along okay i will explain tailwind but i won't explain the full details but you get the idea okay so the tailwind is very simple and anytime i'm using a tailwind style or class you can come to tailwind.css tailwindcss.com okay you can check it out don't worry i will make you try to understand it okay so let's go ahead also if you also want a tailwind course okay you can tell me in the comment section below i will make sure i create the tailwind course so Let's continue with our project. All right. So the way we create custom table, when you come to the document, okay, when you search custom screen, okay, you can see customizing the break the default breakpoint in your project. All right. So in our tailwind.config file, you can see we are customize your screen. If you don't customize your screen, the tailwind CSS will use its own screen, right? So we we'll use will be customize our screen okay so let's say screen 
screens okay and make sure you are typing inside inside of the team not the extent okay sorry that's an inside here okay screen then you put on object small size you can see 500 pixels Okay, let's see. Medium. Let's see seven sixty pixels. Okay. Large nine seventy six pixels. Okay, then extra large one four four zero pixels. Okay. Pixels. All right, so then you save that. So if you come to our doc document, okay, you can see small size means media, mean width, six six forty pixels. Okay, so it is the main width. So not the max width in this case. Okay, so the tail width is using main width for its media query. Okay, so let's continue. You understand better as we continue. The next thing we should do is to come to our all right come to our global styles okay so we have all these let's remove copy remove all this and paste my own global styles okay so i've created a global style for you you can check the description below i'll be putting the source code of the whole project so you can go to the global style and copy this okay so because this is not a tailwind course i don't want to type everything but what this global style is just saying we we'll import fonts okay and this way is the way we add all right we add custom classes to tailwind okay so instead of writing all these classes in our file later in our code data we can just say class background okay so the way we do this is use the apply function uh, the apply system okay in tailwind apply rule so we say at layer base then we open a brackets and write all our custom styles okay this will save us a lot of codes in our normal code okay when we write our codes all right so that's so the next thing is let's come to our page the csx okay we are going to copy all these and remove them okay Okay, then we can just say main. Okay, home page. So guys, let's run our app. Let's what we have. You can say yan run dev or npm run dev. Okay, let me use npm. npm run dev. Okay, so it's to spin up our app. All right. Okay, guys, so after launching our app okay so this is what we have so guys okay you see you came come across any error you can reload your file and also put a comma here okay i forgot to put a comma here earlier on okay so so that will be it so let's get started with our page okay so let me show you what we'll be creating okay so this, this is our final app so let's start with the nav bar okay so now come inside of the layout okay come on that here inside of the body tag let's see nav bar okay so now let's create this component come inside of the app directory all right see components all right navbar.csx okay create inside of the component refc okay if you can't use this shortcut all right you can come to the extension tab search for es7 es7 okay wait see okay this is es7 plus react redos native snip snippet okay when you install that you will be able to use this but if it does not work for you can write you can pause the video and write the function just like this okay 
so now let's import this number up here right you can come to import this number directly okay you can come here to the number double click on it then control plus space bar okay then you click it okay so if this does not work for you you can just import it manually okay all right so let's see what we have when we refresh you can see the nav bar is up there okay so by the way this layout the css file anything we are right on the layout file will be applied okay inside of this layer file will be applied to any pages that is in our app okay but this is the root layout as you can see it's a, it's a root layout okay so let's start with our nav bar okay let's say let's clear all this let's say a div of class relative all right by the way don't forget why using pay with css this class relative just means position relative okay why you over on it you see relative position relative so if that does not work you can come to the extension tab okay so, i want to make sure i show you everything okay you can say tailwind okay so this particular tailwind.css intellisense okay so you can install it so so when you install it anytime we type a class name okay you can over on it to just show you what that class name is talking about okay so make sure you install that extension let's continue so this you can say class background a div of class background and sorry background and by the way this background is not a tailwind css background this is not a tailwind css class it's a custom class when you come to our global styles okay you can see this is what this background is saying it's saying background white dark in on dark mode it should be background slate 99 the slate 900 text black on dark mode text white okay okay so let's consume with our nav bar we say background all right let's give you some other class name let's say padding sorry padding all right so this padding is also a a style okay inside of the global css okay so you can see is applying padding right and left okay and on large device is applying uh, that padding on small device is applying a different padding okay so let's also add nav all right this is also a, a style a global style okay you can also you can check it and let's say z index of 20 okay z20 if you run on it you can see all right so instead of a div let's create an each one tag all right the class name let's say text to xl by the way, anything I'm typing, you can always over on it and check what it, what it does, okay? And you can also check documentation, okay? You can check documentation and... So, Tailwind is very, very easy. So, you can check documentation and understand what we're typing also. So, let's go ahead. Let's say font, bow, okay? Then, let's give it... A name brief AI. You can give it any name you want. Okay, I'll say brief AI. Okay, so let's come down. Let's say button. Okay, let's give it class name of text to Excel. Okay, text. Zero 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 eight one B four, right? 
dark on dark mode you see text six two c d f f okay then instead of this button you can just say let me just put let's just say button for now or let's just say mode for now all right oh. so let's see what we have in our number all right so you can see this is what we have so we'll come back to our number later we'll make it yeah, all right we'll add it dark mode and light mode later so let's now do it let's now do the hero section okay so let's come to our browser in the components create hero section okay dot csx all right, I'll do FC. Then in our page, right here, you see Euro section. Okay. So also you can also add this content. Let's add, let's keep the content to the CSX, or CSX. all right RFC then inside of the page below you can see content sorry it should be content not context content all right let's change this Okay. Then make sure they are imported up here. Okay. So let's see what we have. So let's let's start let's start with the hero section. Okay. First of all, let me see what we have here. Okay, it's not showing because they are this now by covering it. Let's let's come here in the page. Let's say class name margin top. Okay, so you can see it's four. Or let me see it. Okay, so margin top two rem. Okay, it's not. Let's say twelve. Okay, it's three rem. Okay, twelve is not sixteen. Okay, so you can see the radio section. So we are going to start the use section components. Let's close everything and focus on the euro section. Okay, guys. So before we start our euro section, let's go back to this page. Let's give it some styles here. Okay, some class name. Let's see background. Let's see mean height screen. Okay, so that means mean height 100 view each. Let's see padding. Let's see PT 20. Okay, euro section is create a euro section. Okay, let me collapse this. Let's see, let's create a div. Okay, of class name flex justify content. Sorry, justify center. Okay, items. Center flex call so that means it's changing the flex direction to column margin top it's 
okay all right so inside of this div we'll create an h1 tag all right we'll say class name text center all right text for xl and on medium devices the text should be 5 xl all right on large devices text should be 6 xl okay fonts bold all right max width 3 xl okay Excel. All right. So if you don't understand any of these classes I've written, you can just over on it. Okay. That tailwind class, I can see what it does. Okay. So you can see you can write summarize articles notes with right so let's create a span all right so inside of the span brief ai okay so we can create some class names all right let's say text so let's give it a color of zero zero it's one b4 all right close the bracket on dark mode text should be six action two cd ff okay let me Let's put this span on the other line, okay? And starts all. So let's see what we have in our browser so far. Can I refresh? Right, you can see these are euro sections so far. Let's continue. Let's see. Let's wait a p tag below this h1 tag, okay? p tag. We say simply file your reading with brief AI and open source article summarizer that okay transform lengthy articles okay into clear and Concise summaries, right? So let's give this p tag some class name. Let's say class name my4. Okay, so when you over on it, you can see margin top and margin bottom one right? So you can say text center. can say text base then we'll say on medium sizes text xl and max w three xl okay so let's see let's save it as what we have okay, you can see it's looking good so now let's focus on this content okay Okay, so before we continue with the content, let's 
cut our page i discovered an error here okay this should be in lower case the k okay so after that let's cut let's start with our contents okay so let's create a div all right with last name flex okay justify center items center and flex column okay so inside of this div let's create a form okay on submit let's leave this empty for now okay we'll come back to it let's give this form some class names okay let's give it some class some styles i mean you see see, see class name say input okay all right so if you come to your global styles the css you see you have an input style so this input style is applying the form okay so let's continue we we'll have a value let's leave that empty for now and on change okay we'll leave that empty also this folder okay let's see compute articles link yeah okay so let's put an impute field impute okay let's style it Let's say class input. Sorry, these are form should not have class input. Let's give it some styles. Let's say width full. Okay, on medium devices, width should be eighty percent. Okay, on large devices. Should be fifty percent. Okay, relative height of thirty five pixels. Okay, and z index of zero. Okay, so no, let me just run this. Thing. Comments and comment this right now. Okay, let me just comment this and continue. So, in the APU input field, we put okay, so let's bring this on change and value downward. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why I made, I made that error. It should be in the input. I believe you must have seen the error. I'm sorry about that. So, just paste it here. So, the value and all change should be in the input, not the form. Okay. All right. So, and the placeholder also should be inside of the Impute, not the form. Okay. Right, so when we save that, let's check what we have in the browser. Okay, you can see. And make sure your, your pages, you add the use client string to your page, okay, because we'll be using interactive, we'll be making the page interactive. So it adds on submit events. Okay, so 
it won't work or else you put this use client okay that is the um, that is the changes in the next 18 okay that is the new syntax in the next 18 okay so let's put a button okay button of type submit okay and let's give some styles to it say class name background give this color zero zero eight one b four okay so on dark mode see background six two c d f f okay all right so we see text white okay absolute right of zero width of 10 percent okay on large devices width of five percent height 100 percent okay so can add a plus sign okay as the button okay so let's see what we have in the browser okay so you can see it's looking good and nice so the next thing is to start working with our apis okay hey guys so let's talk about the api we're going to use come to your browser and go to rapidapi.com okay to bring it to this page and click here to log in okay you can log in with either google or whatever okay so after you log in then we'll, let's search for the api we're looking for so type in particles extractor and summarizer okay so this first one you click on it All right so this is what we'll be using this is the api we'll be using and first first after it's finished loading all right because i've i've already subscribed to the api so what you need to what you will see here is subscribe to test okay so when you, you click on it subscribe to test then it will take you to the pricing page okay so it's very easy and just subscribe to the basic plan which is free okay then it's going to load and all right so after loading it will take you to this endpoints page okay right. so it takes some time to take it to this endpoint page okay so you will see text to endpoint test endpoint okay so when you see when you look at the endpoints that we have we have summarized we have extract we have extract text okay so we'll come back to this api fully okay so let's just go to our code for now and continue okay guys so firstly we are going to create some states okay that we're going to use let's say let's create a an article state okay first article set article okay use states 
All right, make sure all your use state is imported up here. Okay. Then I'm going to create two values for this state. All right, a URL and a summary. Okay. So you see why we're doing that soon. Right, there should be both be strings. Okay. So let's create another state. All articles, okay. All articles states set all articles. Okay, make sure they are spelled to it. New states. Okay, this one will be an array. All right. So let's create a loading state. Set loading new states false. Okay, so the initial state of the loading should be false. Let's get an error state error set error. Okay, new states it should be false also. Okay. The next thing we'll be doing is to fetch our data from the API. Okay, so let's come back to our browser. All right, let's come to the API, pdpi.com. Right, so the endpoint we're going to be using is this summarized endpoint. Okay, and when you look downward, you will see the required parameters are URL, so there must be URL, and optional parameters are length, HTML. Okay. So, I know you might not understand that right now, but let's continue. Okay, so let's come back to our code. Let's start, Wait, let's start fetching the data, okay? So, let's say, then put a comment here, data fetching. Okay, so let's create a constant. Let's name it fetch summary. Okay, so async. To be an async function, let's pass an event. Okay. And if you notice, we are getting an error in the event because we are using TypeScript. Of course, we are going to get an error. We have to pass in the type of the event. Okay. And type of the event of this type of event is React dot form event. Okay. Then HTML form event. From events okay you don't need to grab this you can just pull it and you see okay undefined okay or undefined so you see that this or undefined okay so let's say let's open a try and catch error a try and catch block okay so when you're using async async and await you have to it's advisable to use cache, try and cache block because so we can catch our error errors. Okay. Okay. So let's say let's come up here. Let's say if events, all right, events of event default. Okay. So it won't refresh our page anytime we submit the form. Okay. And let's set is loading to true, All right? So the loading state will be true before we fetch our data. Okay. So anytime we click on the button, it will be loading. Then to try to fetch our data. Okay. So now let's first thing we need to do is let's come here, come to your API. Okay. Copy these headers. Okay. Copy and come here. Let's create a const and copy. All right. So this should be then paste it. I mean, this should be equals to okay. All right. So this this particular 
rapid API key is, is our key, so it needs to be protected. All right, so what you need to do is to come here, all right? Come to the root, create a dot env file, okay? Let's name it API key. All right, so equals to so come here, copy this. Okay, then paste. Okay, okay, guys. So after you have copied your API key inside of the .env file, make sure it is make sure you put it in strings. Okay, so then in order for you to work, come to your next .config .gx. Okay. To add some code there, okay. So, dot, so the API will be able to access the dot env file. So the app will be able to access the dot env file, okay. So you say API key. Alright, just type it with I'm, I'm typing it. Say process dot env dot API key, okay. Alright, so make sure the name it is corresponding to this name here okay so inside of this place we say env comma react strict mode okay true All right so it should work so make sure you terminate the command in the browser in the terminal okay so control d and npm run the okay okay all right so next thing we are going to work on now is the how to fetch the summary data okay so let's start working on our summary okay so first of all let's Make this in just give this input a value, okay? So the value will be article dot the URL that is passing, okay? And the on change, of course, we pass e, okay? So it will be set article, so you should be familiar with this set article, all right? So inside of this, we we'll open a break bracket. Okay, then we'll spread the article. Okay, and the URL will be e dot target dot value. Okay, so now let's work on I guess our, our data for our API. Okay, okay, so you remember. In our content, okay, here in our header, I mean, we remove this API key from here and pass it to our env file. So, the way we can access it here is we say process dot env dot api key. And if you remember, our API key is a string, so we have to pass as string. Okay, this is a TypeScript. We have to avoid TypeScript error. Okay, we have to pass our string. Okay, so next thing, let's fetch our data. Okay, let's see const response. Okay, await fetch. Okay, so let's get our URL. So when you come back here, okay. So this is the URL. Just copy it and come here. Okay, so open the template literal string, okay? Then paste your URL, okay? Okay, so when you come back here, you will see a required parameter is the URL we're passing in, okay? So for you to work, you have to pass the URL parameter. Okay, so let's come back to our code and we'll pass it, we will say, 
question mark okay url right they will give the value and our value will be dynamic of course it will be the url the article dot url that we're typing in inside of the input okay so article dot url and when you see you can pass in an optional parameter which is the length okay so uh let's pass it we'll say and length equals to three okay so then we have to pass our header inside of the function okay headers headers okay in order for it to work okay sorry it should be so it's really an object okay so open an object and pass in your header okay so this should be getting our data so now let's say const data all right await response dot json okay then let's console log the data. Okay, so you can find a URL online. Let's see news today. Okay, let me copy a particular news URL. Copy this. Okay, let's copy. Then come to your app, paste the URL here. Yeah. Alright, so before we click you know we are, we are here to pass the fetch summary function okay so on this base this on submit function say fetch summary okay so and lastly we have to use our use effect to invoke the function the fetch submit function okay so we'll come below here use effect make sure it's imported okay then you say if there is no article okay all right you say fetch summary then undefined okay then don't forget your then the reason why we're saying it like this is because so it's because if we don't if we just call the fetch submit function inside of here without this if statement, it will be calling the fetch submit fetch summary function okay severally. So I we are not trying to do that. So this is a way to avoid that. Okay, so let's submit and let's come, let's paste. The URL again, okay. Then when you click on the button, let's come to our console. Make sure you click on the button, and it is loading. Let's wait for some time because it has to load. Okay, so you can see after loading, it gave us the summary. Okay, so you can see this is the summary of the article. So that means our API is working perfectly so now we have to display it now and let's let's continue okay so let's come back in the try block okay you say if data dot summary okay Then what we want to do is let's create a new article const new article and we we'll spread the existing article okay then summary beta dot summary okay and we we'll set the summary to the beta dot summary that we we'll get for our API okay so 
and let's say const updated article new article and we we'll spread the all article okay so you can can also log all these data so you can if you don't understand because it's just basic javascript so we are spreading the we are put we are create a new array called updated article okay and we are put inside of the array we are putting this new article created this new article is this we we'll spread the article existing article then we we'll set the summary to the data dot summary that we are getting from our array from our API, I mean, so so now in this updated article, we created a new, we're creating a new array, which is new article up here, and we are spreading the all article array. Okay, okay, so let's now set all articles, okay, to this new updated article array. All right so set article all right so the url will be empty that is then the summary will now be the new article dot summary so I will be slept, but why are we getting error here? Okay. Alright, so let's create a prop, okay, an interface. That's why we're getting an error here. Interface. Let's see. Article props. Right. The URL. To the string sorry this is not over here okay. then summary summary to the string All right then we are okay summary so let's pass the article prop here okay. So it should be article prop or an empty array. Okay, so we're guessing another error. First of all, let's set this data to any. Okay, so we're still getting error. Okay, so my bad. I'm supposed to. Yeah, where I pass the article props. I'm going to put it an array here. Yeah. Okay, because it's an array. It's an array interface. Okay, so the error is no more there. So now let's continue. So now we're setting the article, the summary inside of this article to the new article dot summary. Okay. So now let's undo our error. So catch. So the cache block you set error should be true okay then we can also use finally so so inside the finally block you say set loading should be false okay so now let's start creating our JSX so we can display the summary. Okay, guys, so below the form, let's come here, let's put comments, let's put summary. All right, so let's create a div, the class name, my8, okay, when you like margin top and margin bottom, okay. Flex justify center items center 
All right. So let me let me use um, or Z wrap the code so you can see what I'm typing. Okay. So we say if it's loading, right? So if we're fetching our data, it's loading. We want to display a loading text. Okay. So I say loading list wait it may take 15 seconds all right so if it is not loading okay that is if there is an error okay if it's not loading see else error see something went wrong all right and finally last else will be our content okay so you can see article okay let's put a question mark so there won't be an error article dot summary If it's true, then display our summary. Okay, so we're going to type the summary JSX here. Let's create a div class name summary box. This summary box is a class name that I created. Okay, so you can check it out. So, so the background white on dark mode. BG split 700 padding 4 width full okay on large screen width should be 80 view width okay on medium devices width should be 90 view width okay and on small devices with full all right so let's get on that div let's see flex okay justify center no it should be justified between sorry Then items center and lastly margin bottom it's okay that is two ring. Right, so let's create an each one tag with the class name text this right when it's over on it, it is font size and line height. Okay, okay, so let's see on medium devices text to XL okay so inside of this each one tag let's create a span all right let's see class name of font bool all right so let's do article And let's create another span of class name of font extra lights. Okay, you can see summary. Okay, so This below this div, all right. This div after each one, let's create a p tag which will be a class name of text, text big, okay. 
and and we will put our text here so let's let me show you okay so let me show you how we get our text first of all let's copy the news okay Okay, you copy this. Okay, now come to your app. Paste this. Let me see if I console log it. Okay, yes. So when you click on it, you see loading. Please we wait. We take fifteen seconds. All right. So it won't be displaying anything right now. So it was after it finished loading. It's going to console log the data okay so you see now we have the data okay and when you see the array consists of an object of just summary so that means we are displaying this summary so it will be article the summary so i hope you get that so let's come here see article dot summary okay so then when you come obviously the summary will be displayed all right so the next thing i want us to add is an icon here that will start as copy okay so when we click on the icon to copy the text okay so let's come okay guys so we'll create a under states copy here let's say copy states okay cost copy set copy all right use state and it will be an empty string so the type will be string or boolean okay okay so this should be smaller than obviously so let's come down here and first of all let's let me import some font some icons from react icons we're using for a copy say import ps check Large, okay then from react icons okay i think we are yet to install react icon with that so let's import another icon ai outline copy okay from react icons slash ai okay so this one should be slash yes so let's let me check let me confirm if i have installed react icon okay no so let's install react icons okay, so we can use the icons so open another terminal All right then npm install React icons, okay. So while that is installing, let's continue with our code. Okay. So let's come below here. Let's write our JSX for the summary under the H1 tag for the copy. I mean, create this span. Okay. Span the class name font bow. Okay, then X XL also pointer 
then there will be an on click sorry it should be outside there will be an on click event okay let's leave that empty for now we will do it later so let's say let's open the brackets okay let's conditionally render this we say if the copy states is true okay if it's true display this p tag okay of class name copy so we copy right so this last name is already the custom class name okay when you check it you will see it when you check the global styles right so then we display our bs icon bs check icon okay then inside of the p tag create a span all right of last name text xm okay that is small all right then we would copy okay so else if our copy states is false all right sorry let me arrange this well okay if our copy state is false then let's copy this and let's display the second icon which is the ai apply copy okay and here just change this to copy okay so let's okay so our reactor icon has been has been installed so let's check our browser let's see what we have let's get the news news today all right can copy you know it's not it's not compulsory use news you can use any anything that but just make sure it is it has a link like right, please wait let's be quick 10 seconds Okay. okay you can see it shows copy so now we have to write the functionality so when end I, end I will click on here it's going to copy what we have here okay so let's go back and do that let's come up here let's create an undo copy function okay and do copy then then the undo copy function will take a, a copied summary okay you can name this anything you want okay to take an argument copy summary and it will be a, a string the type of string okay and it will be set copy To be copied summary okay then the way we do this is we say navigator okay dot clipboard right so write text so this is the way we copy anything the clipboard okay so copied summary then I want us to set a timeout so immediately after we copy it to return back to force so the state of the copy will return back to force and to show the copy the copy state again the copy icon I mean so I'll show you what that means right now let's say set copy force after Three thousand seconds and three seconds. Now. Okay. So let's come below here. On this uh, under this on click, we just write and copy. Right. Okay.
Okay, so let's come. Let's, let's obviously paste our link again. Don't worry, you will save this to the local storage now, so we won't have to copy it every time. Okay. There is an error. Okay, so this should be, of course, it should pass. You pass an argument, okay, and this should be like this, okay. So, of course, there will be an error because we're passing an argument. That's the beauty of TypeScript. Let me show you what the error shows. So, see, when you okay, say type copy summary string is void, okay, it's not assigned to any type, okay. So, that means we're just passing the argument and we're not passing anything. Into the function here, so so our copy will be article dot summary. Okay, so we're copying the article dot summary. Okay, so it has compiled. Okay, so where you see where you, where we copy, you click on copy now. Okay, copy. See, it said copied. And it's returned back to false. Okay, so obviously this is copied. Where we uh, come here, paste it somewhere. Okay, the news is copied already. So that's looking good. Okay, guys. So the next thing I'm going to do is let's undo the history. Okay, when we come to the finished app, okay, you can see we have an history. I will click on the history. Just bring the summary straight up. Okay. So we'll create this history and we'll save it to a local storage. So we won't have to be fetching our data every time. Right. So let's come to our code. We don't even know why this is showing an error, but it does not matter. Let's come to our JSX. Okay. Let's above the summary, create the history. So let's create history here. Let's say history. Okay. Then we bracket. See all articles. Okay. Dot slice. So I'm explaining what I mean right now. So this all article array. Okay. Then we are adding slice that is so anytime your history is more than maybe five or six so it, the minimum history is going to display is four so when you add more histories the previous history are going to erase okay so you can increase the history you can put six or seven or anything but this four this will decay only four histories so let's see dot okay let's put question mark just to be safe dot map okay then passing the article and the index okay so we can give it a key of index All right then let's put a fragment then we'll create a div Alright, then this div will have an unclick event. Sorry, unclick. Okay. Let's leave it empty for now. Come back to it. A key. Okay, so this key will be unique. Let's see link. Then index. Okay. Then class name. Okay. Summary box. Padding to width full or medium devices width eighty percent or large devices. 
cake width should be 50 percent my one I imagine top and bottom text small then text color should be zero zero it's one p4 okay then sorry on dark mode the text should be text six two cdff okay okay so inside of this div with a p tag last name cursor Pointer. Right, the word truncates. Okay. Article word it's our article dot URL. Okay. So instead of this on click will be enter we click it will set the article right to article. Person that is this article up here. So we're setting the article state, okay, to article. So this article state. So why am I having errors? Let me check. Okay. Okay, this should be just one. Okay, so it's not bad. So when save that all right so let's save the summary and the history i mean to the local storage can come up okay let's see let's do it here input comment okay Storage, right? So we're going to use a use effect. Okay, so the use effect. Let's create a constant of article from local store. Local storage. Okay, it should be local storage dot get item. Okay, we're so getting the item article. Then, if the article from local storage is not null and is not empty, then Post past articles. Okay. See Jason the path article from local storage. Right, they will set all articles. Remember this set this all article array is the sum is for the history. So set it to the past article. That is saved in local storage. Okay, okay, let's compile API. So this try block. Okay. Let's set the item from local storage. Okay. You see local local storage dot set item. Articles. Let's make sure you spell it well. It's good. 
then json dot stringify the you know, passing this updated article okay updated articles all right so let's wait for it to compile and after it's compiled when you paste the link again okay, sorry let's get the link one last time It's coming. It's paste. It's loading. Then, after it, after it must have load, you see this is what we have, and it will be added to the history. So now let's copy another. Link okay. okay. When you copy this and paste to load, then after loading, you see we have another so another link under history added. Okay, then when you click on the previous one. It just show the previous one okay so it's not fetching the data again all right so that's the usefulness of the link so now let's make our type and also it is store in local storage now I refresh this okay you can see it is saved in our local storage or you click you can also get it back all right so let's Add our typewriter effect. Okay, so this is what I mean. I click on it to type the words out. Okay, so okay, so let's come up here. Let's create our app for now. Let's create a hook folder. All right, I just name it. Writing those GS, okay. We won't be using TypeScript here. So let's import use effect. We we'll didn't use ref and use state right from React. Okay, so let's create a function. Let's export function. Let's call it use type. Use type in effect. Okay, so the hook. So it will take in two arguments. Okay, you can name it anything you want, but I'll say text to type. Okay, so it's very straightforward. Text and the enter key. Okay, key stroke duration in milliseconds. Okay. All right. So let's create a state. Let's see current position. The current position of the text. What do add typewriting effect to? Okay. Let's see set current. Position right, so the current position will be zero. You state to be zero, and we create a current position ref. Okay, current position ref. Okay, it will be use ref then zero also. All right. So inside of this function, we have to create a use effect so we can set the, the interval okay, of the text 
Alright, so let's create a constant. Don't forget to put your bracket here. Your bracket there. Okay, let's create interval ID and set interval. Okay. So let's see. set current position. All right, let's pass in the, the value. You will see value plus one. Okay, so we are adding one to this particular state. So we are changing the state by one at every interval. Okay, so also the ref. See current position ref dot current okay equals to plus or minus plus equals minus equals one sorry that means we're adding it's also the same thing as adding one to the ref okay we're adding plus one to the ref at each interval okay so if the current position ref dot current okay is greater than the text the type dot length okay it's greater than our text then clear interval interval id okay so when anytime the ref has reached the ending or that is it's greater than our length okay so if our word is 100 and the ref already as in we have added plus one up to 100 times or more than 100 times okay maybe plus one to that is new the ref is now 101 so it is greater than the type the text to type length okay so the interval will stop to so clear the interval okay and the interval will be inter key stroke in many seconds okay so that is the time okay so we'll be adding the time of the interval okay all right so let's clean up our user states okay let's okay, this is a good practice let's see clear interval interval id All right, current position the current position ref is close to zero. Let's set the current position back to zero. Okay, so this use effect will run anytime our interval keystroke in. in in seconds okay anytime it changes and anytime our text changes okay so that's when the use effect will run and let's return text type dot substring okay zero then current let's pass in the current position okay so i know this this particular code might still be convinced confusing but when you check it Okay, look look at it again and you understand perfectly. And you do also you don't need to cram it, so just something I just check online also. Alright, so now let's come back to our content. Okay, we're going to use it. Okay, let's come up here. Under this copy, let's let's say constant. Let's create a text constant and use type writing effect. Okay, let me import it. It's not importing automatically. Import use. Okay, I hope let me see the name again. Okay, use typing effect. Let's copy this. Okay. 
here from sorry about that from typing type writing okay so let's use the ok typing effect right and I'm going to pass the article to someone okay as the okay you know when you check here we're passing two arguments the text you type in the article or somewhere and the duration of the interval okay how fast do you want the text to type okay that is the two um arguments I'm going to pass in okay this see article your summary and you see comma is it 10 that is 10 10 seconds I think here okay. 10 seconds okay all right so let's come below here and okay, right here so instead of this article the summary we're going to pass in our text all right so after it compiles i believe it should work perfectly okay so now let's let's click on it here okay you can see it's working perfectly it's typing it okay. so this pen i find it i find it a you find it very like as in the speed is very okay but you can also change the speed let's say 15 okay let's click here you can see it's more faster so whichever one you want to do let me just leave it as 10. okay so the next thing we're going to do is our mode okay we are going to use let, let's come here we finished up so we're going to set three mode light mode dark mode and your system mode okay so let's do that next let's compare code and let's go to our nav bar okay and so the first thing we need to do is to create data, okay? All right, data array is just a dummy data. You see ID one name light icon md light move. Okay, so first of all, let me import all the icons I'm going to use. Let's see, import MD light mode, MD dark mode. Okay from react icons slash md okay and we will need another icon which is import iu md desktop okay from react icons slash iu okay then we'll use use data and use effect okay so let's import that use effect and use states okay from react okay so let's continue creating our data so later we'll map through this data let's paste it three times this one is for the light mode next one is for the dark let's see Dark. 
Okay. And change the icon in the dark mode. Then the last one will be for the system iOS and this desktop. And this one should be system the ID of three. Okay. So we need to create a state, a mode state. Okay. So let's come down here. And for the grids mode set mode okay new state and the initial state to be the light mode okay light mode icon all right so and we have to add the type type is jsx dot element okay all right so let's create another mood another um state i mean so this one will be select mode okay select mode set select mode and use states initially to be false all right and we'll create another state which one will be mode name okay mode name set mode name all right use states so this one we're going to say type of local storage all right so we're saving the state we're saving the state to local storage undefined then and local storage you understand what i'm doing so i'll just follow along get i get item mode name okay then local story does get item mode name else system but right, don't worry yourself i will you will explain you will understand better so let's just continue okay so now let's do the jsx this this one will be the mode states okay mode and let's give this an click Okay, I'll click events. To set selected mode. Okay, previous. And you know for for this not to create an error, but we're using an on click event, we have to change our number to use client okay use client okay so so now let's come below this button or below this div rather let's see it's selected mood it's true. Then I want to create this div. Okay. Div.
then if you have the class name of both okay and we will map the data okay this data great okay to map through the data array okay the data was map then item all right then with a div a div and this div will have a key of item dot id okay and this div will have a class name all right This last name will be templates Litra. Okay, so we are making the class name dynamic. So we'll give it a team, then a mode name is equals to item those name. Then we want to add this class BG slates hundred. On dark mode, say BG slates 900. Okay, All right? So, what on click events? Okay, and on click, we set we set the mode. To item dot icon okay then you say set selected mode okay to force then set mode name to item dot name okay let's so let's come below here let's add the p tag the p tag should be class name of text dot to excel then it should be item dot icon okay that p tag all right Last name capitalize all right so item dot name let's see what we have for now in the browser it's compiling So, so this is what we have in our browser, right? So we click on here and change the icon. Okay. So boy, the functionality is not yet working, it's not yet changing the mode. So let's do that right away. Below, below here, let's create a function called on window match. Okay. Then we say if type of window right is not undefined. Let's put this in okay, it's not undefined. Then let's get the cost dark query window dot match media okay then prefer color skin dark all right so 
let's come below here let's say cost elements equals the document dot document element all right so if the local storage dot mode name is equals to dark all right or in a bracket you see open another bracket then if no mode sorry mode name in local storage and dark query dot matches okay then say element dot class name class list sorry add dark all right else elements the class list remove dark okay all right so this first one is we're checking for the system and this one we're setting it if it's dark they were removing the dark class if it is not dark okay so that's basically i know it will become is confusing but Trust me, just follow along and we understand it better. Okay, on window, let's call the function on window match. All right, then we create a use effect. Okay, use effect. Okay, so let's see const elements document the document element. All right, so we create we use a switch statement switch mode name. Okay, case. Dark elements the class list dot add dark okay. local storage dot set item mode name dark. All right, brick case lights just let's copy this. Okay, and let's copy this from here to here and paste it below. Then we just change this. Both of them to light okay so then default will be local storage dot remove item mode name then we we'll call the function on window match okay and break and this use effect will run anytime the mode name changes okay mode name 
let's see what we have currently in the browser and before we check what we have in the browser first of all i i noticed there's an error here so this list should be right should be remove by removing the dark class not adding the dark class so if the case is light while removing the dark class they will set the Docker storage to light class okay and let's save that then for this to work you have to go to your tailwind.config file okay this is the way tailwind dark mode work if not put this it won't work so you have to say dark mode okay then class all right and make sure you put your comma and save it okay so then lastly what we need to put in this we need to come to our layout.csx okay then okay so we say class name light all right so see that and everything should be working perfectly now okay so let's wait until we finish compiling then we we'll check our app ah, okay so it has finished compiled now when you see see it has changed to light mode automatically okay when i refresh again it's light mode and when I click on here, okay, when I click it, dark mode, right? And when you refresh, still light, it's still dark mode, okay? All right, and system, all right? My system is currently in dark mode. If your system is in light mode, this particular will be light mode, okay? All right, guys. So it's time to deploy our website. All right. Before you before we deploy it, make sure you put your website also in the repository, into your GitHub repository. Okay. And I believe you should be able to do that. But if you can't do that, I will make sure I put it on the screen right now. You can pause and check that out. Okay. You can check the steps out. Okay. Or you can use Google. All right. So we'll be using Vcell dot com go to vcell.com we need to deploy our next js app okay and create an account with vcell then you make you import your git repository from here okay when you when you open this account for the first time you won't see your git repository so you have to import it okay it's, it's very straightforward you should import git repository right then you connect your git repository from to your, to your vcell okay so when you connect your uh, git repository you are going to see all the all the repository all the repository in your git oh, okay so this is our app brief ai youtube that i save it at so if i just click on import all right then it goes here all right you just leave this build and up and output settings empty okay then come to environment variables i'm going to paste our api keys here just come back to your code copy your API key, copy the object, copy the name, sorry, then come back here, copy the code, the key rather. Alright, paste it in, then click on add. Alright, then deploy. So it takes some minutes, some seconds, alright. So I'll be right back after I deploy it, okay? Okay, guys, so if you can see this congratulation page, okay, that means our app is successfully deployed. Right, so click on continue to dashboard. Okay. Then this is the link to our app. All right, so your link will be different from mine. All right, so you can click on the link. Okay. Click on it again, then this is our app. Alright, and if you test everything, everything is working. Let me get a news. Alright. I'll 
copy the link then i'll paste it there loading may take 15 seconds all right we have to wait while we're waiting let's check the responsiveness okay let me inspect that check the responsiveness all right you can see our app is responsive okay at all screen size let me zoom it you can see it's responsive okay okay and you can see the summary is working and if you copy it the copy is working the dark mode light mode and system is working and you can see our history is here basically everything about our app for today and i believe this website made you understand what how to use nextjx and typescript okay and you know a little bit about paywin css and how to fetch api from rapid api all right so if you like this video please like the video and subscribe and comment then you can also share with other your fellow developers okay we are creating more tutorials like this and so hope to see you soon